Hannah and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about all this series I still need to complete. So I did do a video of this fairly recently. It was either the start of this year or the end of last year. I'm not quite sure. I will leave that in the description box down below for you guys to check out if you want to. I felt like I needed to update this list because there are so many series that I need to complete that were not on that list. For this list I'm going to be looking at series where I have at least read the first book and really want to continue with this series or give, continue with the series just to see how it goes. So I have a fair bit of series to talk to you guys about going from graphic novels, dystopian, fantasy. I, I feel like that's it but I'm not 100% sure with all of them. So with that said, let's get straight into these books. The first series I want to talk to you guys about is The Trials of Apollo by Rick Ryan Gordon. Now, if you guys have been following me, you guys will know that I have gone through this whole universe rereading all of the books ready for the Trials of Apollo series. I am still currently up to the second one, haven't started it yet because I had to put it on hold for the hour readathon because I couldn't fit any of these into the prompts I had unfortunately so I did have to put it on hold until May so I will not be picking up the second one until May unless I finish the owls earlier than expected which is an entire possibility. I'm rereading this series and starting on the rest of the books because I have not finished them. I have only ever finished the first one in this series in preparation for the newest one coming out in September which I am super excited about. For you guys who do not know what this series is about you basically have to start with Percy Jackson which is the first series in this universe and that follows a boy named Percy Jackson obviously who finds out one day that he is half human, half god, making him a demigod. He's taken to Camp Half-Blood to basically protect him from all the dangers that are starting to occur. And it follows him through his journey and all these adventures that he has to go on throughout the series. Speaking of a series I intend to finish really, really soon is The Bone Witch by Rin Chapaneo. I have talked about this book a lot in my previous videos, but I have read the first one and the second one, but because it's been so long, I decided to give it a reread, and that way I can catch up and finish the third one, knowing what is going on in this world, because I completely forget what happens in the second book. For you guys who do not know what this series is about, it basically follows this character named T from both the past and the present. It is unique in the way that it is told through the past and the present because the past is told through her point of view and the present is told through a person she's telling her stories and experiences to point of view, which is a really interesting way of doing it. Basically, it is about her discovering her powers and coming into her own for these powers she has because she is a bone witch or a necromancer and it has all those issues that deal with that and the darkness. This is a very dark fantasy but that's what I really enjoyed about it. So I'm interested to keep on going with this series and see how she ends up and what how it ends and wraps up. The next series I want to talk to you guys about is a series I read a really long time ago. I only read the first one and really enjoyed it. I, by a long time ago, I mean at least five or six years ago. And that is Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. And because I read it so long ago, I do not exactly remember a lot of the details of this book. This book is a dystopian and it is set in the world of Reverie where it follows this girl named Ariel who basically lives her life in these confined spaces and then one day her mother goes missing and she has to break the rules to find her mother. Along the way she meets this boy named Perry and they end up working together to solve this mystery. I don't remember a lot about it but I do remember really enjoying it and enjoying the world and the characters so I'm intrigued to see if I will still enjoy this series or if it was just one I would have liked five or six years ago when I was still in high school but I guess I shall see and let you guys know all my thoughts. 
The next series I want to talk to you guys about is one I probably should pick up because it will not take me that long to read and that is Ever Heart Oz. The series is actually called Way Would Children by Shauna McGuire. These are really short as you can see. I quite enjoyed the first one actually. I thought it was a really interesting world and premise and I really enjoyed the characters in this book. I know it has quite a few people don't enjoy it but I really enjoyed this first one so I'm intrigued to see how the rest of the series goes. It basically follows these children who have come back from these worlds like Wonderland and different types of worlds but it follows this character named Nancy who has come back from this darker world and it follows her as she's put to this home for these children to help them recover and then these people start getting murdered and she gets involved in this metal mystery. I really enjoyed it and I am intrigued to see how the rest of the series goes because I believe this next one actually follows different characters. I do like the characters it's going to follow so I'm really interested to see about their story. The next series I want to talk to you guys about is one that I have probably mentioned a little bit and that is The Grace Graceling by Christian Kershaw. These are companion novels although they are set in the same universe. I have read Graceling a lot. I actually haven't read the other two so I really really need to get on to that but if I was to do it I would reread it from the start because that's the kind of person I am. This one follows this character named Katza who has the grace of killing which basically means grace is basically got power. She is used as a personal bodyguard to one of the kings until the king of all the kingdoms is kidnapped and she ends up in that mystery. So she gets involved into that mystery of how he got kidnapped and it also and gives her a chance to get out of this situation that she is currently in of being manipulated and used for her grace. I absolutely love this story and I love her character. I found it really refreshing take on this dice. It's kind of dystopian. So I really enjoyed it. I'm interested to see about the other two characters because this series follows different characters for each book. Fire and Bitter Blue. So I'm intrigued to see how they are connected or if they are connected or what the other characters are like. A series that I need to read, I absolutely loved the first one and then never got around. I think this is actually the second one. It is. Oh. So the one I'm holding up will be the second one. So I have the second one but I haven't actually read it. And that is the Home for Peculiar Children ch series. I have only read the first one and I absolutely loved it but I have no idea why I haven't read the second one or when I even own it. I don't even own the first one anymore but so that is going to have to change but this series is really interesting from what I read. It has some mixed media in it. It has these really creepy photos in the first book from memory. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was such an interesting idea and it was something I'd never seen before so that was really really interesting. So this series basically starts off following this character named Jacob who ends up travelling to this abandoned island of, in Wales where he comes across the Miss Pettigrew's Home for Peculiar Children and it follows them and he soon discovers that these children are not what they seem and it follows their, that story and it's really, really interesting and he finds out how he is connected to these children and it's, it's, it's great. And I love the use of the photographs in it. It's very, very chilling atmosphere. It's so, so interesting. I really need to pick it up and finish it already because I think there's like six books now and I'm really behind. <laughs> the next series is Ace of Shades by Man Fruity. This one follows this character named Anine who is from a posh kind of city who ends up having to go to the city of Sin to find her missing mother. She ends up having to team up with the mob boss Levi and oh my gosh the magic system in this is so interesting it is so unique it's just phenomenal i absolutely love amanda foodie's writing so i really enjoyed this one i also loved dawn of the bunny city i just never had the chance well 
I never picked up the second one once I had finished this one and I really hope to finish the trilogy because now it is a trilogy. When I read this one, there was only two out and now there is three, so I really need to pick it up and finish this amazing trilogy. The next series I want to talk to you guys about is The Supernatural Academy by Jamin Eve. This one is basically, as the title suggests, about a girl who ends up discovering that she is a supernatural, although they're not sure which type of supernatural, and is recruited is taken to the Supernatural Academy to discover her powers and learn all about the supernatural world. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed her character. I absolutely loved the different elements of the story and the known story that we know about comes into play, but in a way you wouldn't expect, which was really intriguing. I really liked it. And I'm excited to continue with this series. I believe she's just finished the third one, so it's a complete series now, so I really need to finish it. Next three I want to mention are all my graphic novel series that I am currently reading and need to finish. The first one is Lock and Key. I've just finished the second one for my owls, so I'm actually making headway on this series. I believe there is six in total and they are very very dark but I absolutely love them for that reason. The Felicity family who ends up moving to this lock mansion after their father is murdered and it follows the mystery of these keys that they find in the mansion and the sorts of things that they can do and it really deals with grief really really well and the mystery element phenomenal. It ties them really seamlessly and I absolutely love them. They're really quick reads obviously because they're graphic novels and I'm absolutely loving this series so far. And what the next graphic novel and comic I want to talk to you guys about is Harley Quinn. I started these a really long time ago and got nearly finished. I had the list of all the comics in the series and in the order but then I got a new phone and all of it got deleted so I need to rewrite out the list for these comics so I know what order to read them in and finish her story because I absolutely love Harley as a character. She is just amazing villain character, moral dilemma character. I don't believe she's a complete villain so that's what I like about her and I don't believe I really need to tell you who Harley is because she's so well known and I just I really need to finish these comics. The last one I want to talk to you guys about is Hellblazer. This one follows this exorcist named John Constantine who basically is an exorcist who takes out demons from people. I absolutely loved the movie and the TV show that came out which really prompted me to read these. I don't, this is the 30th anniversary edition so it just gave me a glimpse into this series and I really really want to continue with it because it's just so dark and gritty and that's what I like about these comics that I pick up. The next two I want to talk to you guys about is ones that have recent releases and that is Wicked Saints and Crown of Feathers by Nicolae Borpreto. This one has just come out recently so I'm really intrigued to read this one although I didn't enjoy it the first time I read it. I feel like I wasn't in the right space to be reading it at the time so I didn't really enjoy it as much as I could have because I've been watching quite a few reviews about it and it's made convince me to pick it up again and finish this series and read Heart of Flames so I'm definitely gonna try and see how I go with that one. I know I may not like it but I'm intrigued to see if I'll like it. This one, although there is one element about this story that I really liked, I really enjoyed the reading about the development of the two sisters and their bond, well, their relationship I should say, because that was really interesting. It is a very toxic relationship. I don't think I've read a lot of relationships between siblings that are this toxic and executed so so beautifully. It basically follows this character named Veronica who has always dreamed of being a Phoenix writer but Phoenix writers have become ex ex uh, ex sort of they've become extinct so that is an issue but then she ends up finding the group with the rebel group 
that are fit, training to be Phoenix Riders and she ends up having to disguise herself as a, I believe she has to disguise herself as a boy to learn all about the Phoenix Rider aspect of things and it really, really delves into relationships in this first book which I really enjoyed and the relationship between her and the Phoenixes is just Oh my gosh, it is amazing. I've never read a story that was able to convey the relationship between animal and human so well. Although I did say I didn't like it and it feels like I'm saying I did quite enjoy it. I liked those two aspects of it but at the time of reading it felt really slow and didn't seem to go anywhere. But I'm going to give it another go. So we shall see if I enjoy it as much the second time. Another one is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Ruthless Gods just came out and I believe that flips the table, at least from what I know. And this one deals with two types of magics in this world. One is blood magic, which was so interesting to read about. And one was about this girl who had the magic of the gods inside her head and she used their abilities. I found it really fascinating to see the clash between these two magics and they have to work together at one point. I can't remember why. And it follows these three characters. So there's Nadia, who's the girl who has the god magic, and then the prince who deals with the blood magic, and those two kingdoms are at war, and then there's a monster. Then there's the person who is described as a monster because he is very ruthless. They end up having to team up together, and it's it's really, really interesting story, so I'm really intrigued to see how the second one will go. The next one I want to talk to you guys about is called Fallen. I read this a long time ago. I only own one and two, so I do want to finish it because from memory it was a really interesting concept. It is a angel story, hence the Fallen. Um, it follows this character named Aaron who on his 18th birthday starts hearing these voices in his head, thinks he's going crazy. He is a foster kid, but then one day he discovers that he is half angel, half human, and because of this he is chosen to redeem the fallen angels. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so interesting. There and his heritage comes a big play into this which angel that was the one that is his father, so that was interesting switch of how they did that. I really want to continue with this series. I read it. Um, I read it about the same time as Under the Never Sky, so I'm not sure if I'll enjoy it this time around, but we shall see. The last duology I want to talk to you about is Carry On by Rainbow Prowl. I read Carry On really quickly. I read it on the plane when I was going to Queensland and read through it really, really fast. It wasn't super amazing, but I really did enjoy it. I started the second one, was kind of enjoying it, but then I left it at my friend's house and didn't have, get it back for like a month because I kept forgetting to grab it. And yeah, so I ended up not picking it back up, but I really intend to because I'm intrigued to see what the second one's going to be about because I felt like this one wrapped up really well. So I will see how much I enjoy the second one. Basically follows this character named Simon Snow, who is the chosen one seen to save the world. He is destined to save the world using his powers, but unfortunately he is not great at using his powers. It has this amazing, it really is a great love story. I really enjoyed the love romance in this book, which is unlike for me because I really enjoyed it. I thought Baz was amazing. He's such an incredible character. So yeah, I really did enjoy it. It is fantasy. It is basically the same kind of trope as Harry Potter. So that was interesting. But yeah, I want to see what the second one's like because I'm not sure where it can go from here. Alright guys, that is it for all the series I really need to complete. I have not included the ones that haven't come out yet. So there are still a few series that I have on my shelf that I want to finish, but the second book hasn't come out yet. So if you're looking for those, that's where they are. If you like what, as I said, I will leave my video for my previous list in the description box down below, as well as my social media. 
Let me know in the comments what book series you guys still need to finish or if you have read any of these series in its entirety and if you enjoyed them or not. But until next time guys, see ya!